deceit in our courts and what we can do about it. We're going to discuss that right now on Comcast Newsmakers. Hello and welcome. I'm Laura Jones. With me is Kevin Shivers. He is the executive director of the National Federation of Independent Businesses. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me back. So you represent a number of businesses, businesses throughout the state, and there's a real legal issue going on here. Fill us in. Sure. I represent about 15,000 small and independent businesses in Pennsylvania. Uh, most of them are Main Street companies. And uh, you know, recently we have uh, read reports uh, in newspapers about uh, fraud and deceit, uh, several instances uh, that have really shocked uh, not only small businesses but taxpayers and others of uh, instances of, of fraud and abuse that are happening in our civil justice system. All right, can you give us some examples of what you're talking about when it comes to Pennsylvania's legal climate? You know, you'll be watching or flipping through the TV and you'll say, have you been injured by an asbestos? Please call this law firm of such, such and such. And you know, people may have legitimately had some type of injury or what have you, but is this kind of what you're getting at? That's exactly right, because if you've been injured in an accident, you need to have your day in court. I mean, that, that's what our system uh, says, but what we're finding is that there are some personal injury lawyers who are blurring the line between what's right and maybe what might be legal but isn't really so is there ethical. So is there a loophole in the law and, uh, you know, is, is the judicial system kind of, are their hands tied at this point? Sure. Uh, there have been judges uh, in cases involving Philadelphia lawyers and Pittsburgh lawyers that have shown a pattern of deceit uh, where uh, attorneys are misrepresenting uh, evidence, they're withholding evidence in cases, uh, they're denying justice uh, because of this type of activity. Is it because um, they're, are, is the claim that they're coaching their clients or just misrepresenting in, themselves in court? In, in some instances there are. In some instances witnesses are making claims in one lawsuit and then changing their stories in other lawsuits. And the reason for this is there is a complete lack of transparency in how certain lawsuits are carried forward. And, and the justice, many justices have spoken out about this. So we've got the three branches of government, so the, the judicial, uh, you know, they're saying, hey, listen, this is a law. Our hands are tied. We don't have the transparency. Then you go where? The legislature? That's right. And there's a piece of legislation uh, currently before the Pennsylvania State House. It's House Bill 1150. Uh, and it's called Fairness and Transparency in our Courts Act. And what it does is it requires that uh, plaintiffs in certain lawsuits uh, actually disclose to the court all of the cases that all of the claims that they have made in certain lawsuits so that all of the parties are aware of all of these actions also too it says in there that you are responsible for damages equal to your percentage of fault it's a simple continuation of the fair share act that says that if you're 20 percent at fault you should be held responsible for 20 percent of the damages right. the problem is without this type of transparency lawyers are left uh, to their own uh, and we're finding in several instances involving attorneys in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, they crossed the line. And in fact, in one instance, a West Virginia jury awarded uh, $400,000 uh, to a company uh, against a personal injury firm. And this firm was prosecuted under uh, the federal RICO statute, RICO, the same right. uh, statute that is there to take out organized crime. And just final thoughts. I mean, this cost, no, it's not only clogging up the justice system for people who have legitimate claims, but there's a big cost uh, to consumers, job creation. Just final thoughts on that? Every dollar that a business has to pay defending a fraudulent lawsuit, that's one less dollar that they have to grow their companies, create jobs, raise salaries. It also raises the cost of goods and services, and it also raises the cost of taxpayers who have to pay higher premiums in their local communities. So the cost of fraud is rampant, and we think that uh, disclosure is the best disinfectant. All right, so you're working with the legislature to accomplish that. We thank you for taking the time to explain this to us, and, and good to have you here on Newsmakers. And we thank Thank you for watching this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Laura Jones. We'll see you next time.